Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard had a message for Mark Cuban after Mark Cuban said that women that support Trump are basically stupid and incompetent. Check it out. Trump transition team co-chair Tulsi Gabbard has been on a tear through the country, campaigning for Donald Trump in battleground and blue strongholds. In the last two weeks, she's visited more than a dozen states, reaching out to Democrats who are disaffected with Kamala Harris. Here to tell us what she's seeing and hearing on the ground is Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi, it's so great to have you on this morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good to see you. Thank you so much. So it's been fascinating to see how the Trump campaign is being very strict. Man, to think that this is the woman that actually ended Kamala Harris's bid for presidency in 2019-2020 until Joe Biden ultimately picked and selected the woman that was going to kick him out of the White House is crazy. Way more intelligent, knows how to confidently articulate her points, and can actually answer questions without a teleprompter or a script. Tulsi Gabbard absolutely destroyed Kamala Harris, and people was not rocking with her until she was selected for y'all. Strategic about how they're using you and RFK and deploying you out to places that are blue, like in Wisconsin, in that Madison area. Um, but you've been doing, you've been with the campaign for, for quite a while. What have you been seeing and what kinds of things have been changing um, as you've gone along in these months on the campaign? Uh, well, there's a lot of energy building, that's for sure, and it's palpable on the ground. I just want to share some of the really incredible and unique experiences we've had. That, that event that we just held in Madison, Wisconsin, a few days ago, uh, at, at every one of these events that she I've been doing with whites, Bobby Kennedy, I ask the audience, raise your hand if you're a Democrat or a former Democrat. And in almost every event, uh, somewhere between you know 35 to 50 percent of the room will raise their hand. It wow. was no different in Madison. The cool thing was this, though, when when their hands went up, there was probably a couple thousand people in the hall there. The rest of the audience started to turn around and look around, and they all stood up and cheered and welcomed wow. them and just surrounded them really with love and kindness. And I had so many people come up to me at the end of that saying, I came in here afraid. I've never been to a political rally before. I didn't know what to expect. I'm a Democrat, lifelong Democrat, never voted before. Different variations of this, but each walking out saying, I'm voting for Donald Trump because of what I experienced here today. Do you see how intelligent and articulate this woman is? Do you see how smart and think about this? Yo, if if Tulsi Gabbard was the person that was on the opposite end of Trump, then I would start to be like, OK, uh, yeah, OK. All right. Y'all might have a little something there. We might have something to, 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 you know, try to figure out. We might have something to try to figure out. But Tulsi is pretty conservative. Uh, and, and Tulsi acts, absolutely stands for what America represents. If Kamala was Tulsi, but with Kamala's skin, y'all might have something on y'all hands. But the fact that y'all lost Tulsi Gabbard is insane to me. This woman can just straight up talk off the cuff, intelligent, knows what she's saying. They should have selected her. They should have selected her. And then I would be like, okay, wait a minute. I'm still conservative, but I like her. Not that I would necessarily have voted for her on the Democratic side, but I would have been like, oh, you know what? Y'all might got something there. You know, Tulsi, when Mark Cuban says Donald Trump doesn't like to surround himself with smart, <laughs> intelligent, independent women, it's hard not to see that's a direct shot at Kellyanne Conway, Kaylee McEnany, Linda McMahon, a whole host of other women as well, including you, Tulsi. It seems like it's a direct shot at someone like you. You know, it, there, there's actually something much darker that he is he is mm. implying there because the premise of his statement is that uh, he believes that Liz Cheney and, and female warmongers like her are what defines strong women. Mm. Uh, they are they are hypocrites and cowards because when you look at people like Liz Cheney, she is eager to send our troops into harm's way. She is eager to advocate for more stupid wars, but she and other warmongers like her will never volunteer to put their lives on the line for these military adventures they're advocating in. I just finished a couple of days of Army Reserve duty at Fort Sill.
Hillsdale, Oklahoma. And yesterday morning, I stood there on the graduation field and saw a few hundred brand new soldiers graduating from basic training probably a thousand family members there to celebrate them. And it was so moving. And, and, and I was thinking about people like Liz Cheney when I was watching them, because these are the young men and women who will pay the price potentially with their lives if people like Liz Cheney, Dick Cheney, and Kamala Harris are allowed to be in power. This is one of the many reasons why I'm so strongly advocating for and supporting for President Trump to go back to the White House, to end wars, not start them. She's exactly. Good. The closer you are to it, the more serious you should be about how you utilize those young souls. Uh, Tulsi, real quick. Well, I got a question for y'all also, aside from that, because I'm looking at the dude on the right, um, and I know that sneakers and suits are a thing, and I know that that's like the vibe. I, I think I might be too old school for it. Is sneakers and shoes y'all vibe? Because for me, you know, I like a nice pair of... Uh, um, and I'm talking about with slacks or with shoes. I like a nice Chelsea boot. I like a nice dress shoe. Um, I'm a little different. I can't wear, I've, I've, I've never been a dude to wear Jordans or any of that type of stuff with my suit or with my slacks. So just, just wondering, I like the whole American Patriot thing that he got going on. Just wondering for y'all, is sneakers a, like something that y'all rocking with or is that just a fad that y'all think is going to play out? Because I'm, I'm not with the Jordan 11s or the Pandas to go with, the, go with it. I'm just kind of, I'm not for it. I'm a little more old school with it. Quick, where are you going in the closing days? Where would you be hitting the trail on behalf of the campaign? <laughs> dress, call, dress shoes ain't comfortable because you don't regularly wear dress shoes. Dress shoes can be comfortable if you know what you're doing and you know what to look for. Don't get the cheap ones. Absolutely they are. Absolutely. You just got to get used to doing something that you wouldn't do. It reminds me of people that first put on some dress pants or some slacks, and then they start sagging them a little bit. Like, no, nah, dog, there ain't no jeans. You shouldn't be sagging your jeans in the first place. We got, we got about 72 hours until election day. I was just looking at the schedule. I will be in Georgia later today, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, and North Carolina before Monday night. For Monday night. I'm old as right. dust. Here we go. Well, thanks for being with us this morning, Thank Tulsi. You. We appreciate Thank you, being you so much. Good to see you. Thanks, Tulsi. Thank you. Nice to see you. No question, you guys. War and Peace is on the ballot. And this trade between the Cheneys and then Tulsi Gabbard and RFK is one of the most fascinating things. And that unity moment she talked about, this is a truly unified ticket. And I love what she said about the characterization of what it means to be a strong woman. Yes, um, I'd love how that. How they frame that. That was, thank you. I thought that was brilliant. I think it's important to point out, like, this is not an isolated thing coming from Mark Cuban. As much as, I don't, and I don't know if they're trying to distance themselves from his comments at all, but I, I don't know about you guys, but I found it pretty offensive when I heard Michelle Obama and many other people from the Kamala Harris campaign telling women to lie to their husbands. Yeah, I remember that. There's a commercial about it. And that's the problem. Oh, snaps, that's Danica Patrick, ain't it? That's Danica Patrick. Hmm. There is literally an ad. Yeah. Like, this is their narrative is basically Sarah that Huckabee Sanders saying but not saying you're too weak. I'm going to need y'all to be able to recognize who political people are or people that are, are crafting policy or working on y'all behalf more than y'all able to identify some Instagram model and some OnlyFans. If you don't know who Sarah Huckabee Sanders is or Danica Patrick or Tulsi Gabbard or any of these women that's sitting up here right now and they, without being able to, you know, quickly see it and not having to look it up or do some kind of Google lens or Google AI search, then that's a problem. We need to know who these women are more than we know who Brittany Renner is and, and whatever other Instagram model Bernice Burgos is, okay? to have an open dialogue and conversation with your boyfriend or your husband or your partner so you should just sneak around their back and smile and lie to them about who you're voting for i, I found it completely demeaning and something that yeah. reinforces exactly what mark cuban is saying as though any woman all women are out there like hiding it from their husbands no no we're proud we're voting for donald j trump if that's okay with everybody oh snaps laura trump i like her I just discovered her recently and I didn't realize how educated that she is. But every last one of these women would absolutely run circles 
around Kamala Harris. Every last one of these women that's sitting up here right now on that panel will absolutely run circles around Kamala Harris, and that's a fact. <laughs> Not hiding anything. What we're seeing play out now is just what I experienced for many, many years. I remember going back to 2016 when Hillary Clinton was running for president, and I was a vice chair of the DNC. I resigned so that I could campaign against her and uh, warn the American people about how dangerous she would be as commander in chief. And over and over, I got asked by people in the media, people in the party leadership, how dare you, as a woman, not support this person who could break through the glass ceiling and be the Gender first female politics, president? identity politics. And my response to every person who asked me this question is, I'm offended that you're reducing me and my intelligence to my body parts. Somebody said, why are conservative women the hottest? Because they know how to think effectively for themselves. They're not dumb, but at the same time, they choose to lean into the thing that's best for the American people, and they actually celebrate men. It is. It's very attractive to see, see intelligent women stand for the thing that's right for the country. It is. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is Tulsi Gabbard. I am a fan of Tulsi Gabbard uh, and Sarah Huckabee Sanders and Lord Trump and uh, even Danica Patrick. I think that all of those women are absolutely stunning and phenomenal.